Hi everyone, Kate here from Launch Tabletop. Uh, I'm just making a quick video to uh, give you an update on the status of our PDF Stitcher functionality. We've just launched it this afternoon. So if you log into Launch Lab now, you will see it. So I thought I'd put together a video telling you a little bit about what it is, how to use it and uh, the benefits to it, who it's for really. Uh, so what is it? It's a tool that we've developed in-house that will make it easier for people without high-level graphic design skills and software skills to produce a file that will pass our system verification requirements. Uh, what we originally launched with, and we still have this mode, is it's quite high-level stuff. You've got to be able to operate something like InDesign or Illustrator at a fairly high level. You need to understand spot colours and layers and outputting to PDF. And the feedback from a lot of people was that it was just too much to ask. And that's fair feedback. So we listened. We've been working on this since. Uh, we really got stuck in in October. We've been talking about it for a couple of months and thinking about how it would go. But yes, a couple of months of hard work and uh, Alana and Eric just pushed it this afternoon because it is this afternoon now. So to use it, you don't need to have those high level skills anymore. You've got to be able to operate a program like on the higher end, uh, Photoshop or GIMP. Uh, on the lower end, something like Canva or uh, MS Paint, Paint.net, one of those, you know, pixel programs. That's all you need. You need to be able to produce a PNG image or a JPEG image of the, you know, precise pixel size for one of those. But that's very similar to what Game Crafter and similar uh, platforms require. So. Let's get into it. How to find it. I'm going to bring up my screen. This is my launch lab window and you can see that I've got some little bits and pieces around. Here's a few projects. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into a project that I'd already started, but you can do it in a new one as well. So we're going to go into a thing called uh, Stitch This. I don't have anything here at the moment. So far, it looks exactly the same. No changes at all. And we're going to add a couple of things to this project. There are actually two things that we've been working on. Uh, Eris uh, with Tanya and Stephen have been working on a deck of cards, which we're calling the designer deck, the first designer deck. And it's, it's designed for concepting. But what it is, is a deck of 90 poker cards in a tuck box. So we're going to take some cards. I'm not going to give it a fancy name because there's only one deck. It's going to be poker cards. Uh, simple white core, we don't need anything fancy. We need 90 of them, so it's a reasonably chunky deck. We're going to put a smooth finish on it. You can use any of those options at all for the stitcher. It doesn't care about that. All it's interested in is artwork. Now that we're back to our project screen, you can see that it looks a little different. We've now got four tabs here. Used to have three, got four now. And you can see that there's this new bit here called simplified mode. The new uh, mode that we've added for the stitcher is simplified mode. By default, everyone will see simplified mode because we expect it to be the, the mode that most people use most often. If you want to use uh, programs like InDesign and make your own PDFs, you can still do that. You're going to be looking for the professional mode. The difference between them at the start is you'll get a different set of templates. Professional mode, you'll get the same templates you got before. There's an AI file, a raw PDF file, an IDML file, and there's an instruction cover sheet. In Simplified, you also will get a pack of templates, but they're not vector templates. They're all pixels. You'll get a PNG file that's transparent that shows you where the bleed goes. It shows you where the safe margins are and where the die line sits. We're also giving you a layered Photoshop document so that you can work on your designs backwards if you have that slightly high level of skill required for Photoshop, because some of you do. Um, and so we want to make life easy for you. There's also a little instruction sheet in there talking about what the sizes we are that we need, because we do need to be fussy with the pixel quantities. You can be a little bit over or a little bit under what we specify. And we've got some, some fuzzy work there to account for those those little differences, um, but they do need to be close. So don't give us something that's 100 pixels larger because the system will just nope out on you. If we download one of the templates, uh, actually, I'm not going to be able to show it to you because you can't see my other windows, but inside you'll get that little package of things. So go and have a look. The next step is where we get interesting. So we've, let's pretend that we've gone away and we've worked up our images for our deck which I have, I've got them all in a window ready to go. The next step is that we're going to 
create a PDF and it's as simple as this. You click create PDF and it brings up this window. For cards, because there are a lot of them, you get a drag and drop interface. You can drag and drop or you can uh, click, it opens up a dialog, you select your uh, files, I'm just selecting mine now, all 90 of them, and it uploads them into your system's memory. It's not uploading them to the server, that comes at the very end. So it says, you've selected 90 files. If I'd selected more, it would just say, I'm sorry, you can't select that many. If you select fewer, it goes, well, you're supposed to have 90, but you only picked, you know, this number. Do you want to pick some more or would you like to proceed? Because it's quite possible that you might have some blank ones and that's fine. So we're going to continue. And now you can see all of the images that I just fed it. So I've got in each uh, deck, we've got six suits. We've got our little astronaut meeples and there are 12 of each suit with a hero card. So there's 13. We've got our little rockets and there's the hero card. We've got stars with a hero card. We've got moons with a hero card and suns with a hero card. And then I think my favourite is the galaxy. We've got a galaxy with a lovely swirliness. The artwork isn't finished, as you may have gathered from this lovely spiky alien. We do have a couple of aliens. Shout out to Kang and Kodos there. And we're including 10 blank cards because people might want to customise them. So when you're happy with how it is, what you've got to do is uh, click Create PDF. In the meantime, though, there are some other things that you might want to do. You might decide that you want to delete an image and you can do that. And it takes it to this little option here where it says you can add an image. So I might say, well, you know what, actually, I want to have another alien. So opening up my window, you can't see what I'm doing because it's off the side. I'm going to pick one of my aliens and I can put it in. If I want to put my alien with the other aliens, I can just click it and drag it. Or if I want to put them down the end, I can select them and drag them like that. I could also, if I delete that one again, I could look at something I've already got and say, no, actually, instead of finding that again somewhere else, I'm just going to duplicate it. And it will fill the first empty spot that it finds. That's basically how simple it is. You can click and drag. Uh, you can delete. You can duplicate. What you can't do yet with this window, and we will be offering it in the future, is being able to drag and drop directly into this window. Not possible right now. Uh, we're also hoping to offer sooner rather than later the ability to select multiple images in this window and drag them all or duplicate them all or delete them all. But anyway, moving on. Once we've got our uh, setup of images ready to go, we hit Create PDF. Once you hit Create PDF, why are you not going? Oh, there we go. Just took a second. Once you hit Create PDF, it's really important that you don't close the window until it has finished uploading. If you close the window while that's happening, it will break the upload and you won't get your file. You can start again, of course, but that's annoying. The more images you're uploading, the longer the upload will take. The larger the images you're uploading, the longer it will take. So for example, if you're doing an extra large square box, those are going to be pretty chunky files that you're working with. So it will take a while. If you're doing 90 poker cards like we are, it's going to take a little while. If you were doing 18 poker cards, it would go much faster. So we're nearly done with this one. Getting there, 91%. And it's done. On the uh, after page, it's created a server, it's created a file now that we're sending the server, it's a zip file, full of all of your images plus a page of instructions. And up there on the server, the instructions are analysed. The order of the files that you've fed it are looked at, so it's really important that you get them in the right order because we don't know what your order is supposed to be, so we, we believe you when you, you give them to us. Uh, we will email you a link when that's done. And over here, I prepared one earlier. This is what you'll receive in your email. So whatever email address you've got on your account, that's the email address you want to be looking at. The more complex the file that you're creating, the longer the server will take to do it. So if you were doing a deck of 18 cards, that will go much faster than a deck of 90 cards. A deck of 500 cards will take much longer. 
right? So just be aware that the time it takes to create the file can vary quite a lot depending on what you're asking the server to do. Nothing's impossible, it will just take a bit longer. So once you've got this, you click the button, it downloads your PDF. Uh, I have that over in another window. Uh, we will look at that in a moment because I don't want to switch back. So here we are back in my thing. We're going to quickly create the backs. So I've got some images. We're going to feed it that one. Nope. Yes. All right. So I only selected one. It's expecting 90. So it's saying, well, you've only given us one. We require this many. You're a bit short. You could drag and drop more in here you could click and open up the window and add more that way. That would be absolutely fine. Or you can move to the next step and you can duplicate if you want the same backs. Now, obviously, if you've got to do this for 90 cards, that's going to take a while just sitting there clicking duplicate. So that could be a bit tedious. Uh, if you have different backs in your deck, so you may like 10 with one back and 10 with a different back, back. It's really important to make sure that whatever the order between the front and the back, those orders match because that's the order that we will print them in. Uh, if you wanted to leave all of these blank, you could. Uh, future update will have the ability to say everything else in this deck, I want it all left blank, but that's not what we have right now. I'm going to skip past this and show you that if you try, once you've started working on something, if you try to close it, it will give you a warning. You will lose that progress that you've made. So if you're like, oh, well, I'm going to come back to this later, it won't let you close the window because all of that's in your memory. It will dump the memory. So that's all gone now. So let's go and have a quick look at the PDF. So this is my PDF that I created just before. It has, as you can see, there are 90 cards in this image and it's got them in the order that I've fed them to the system. So I've got all of my orange ones numbered 1 through 12, followed by the orange hero card. It's got my red ones 1 through 12, followed by the red hero and so on through the stars and the moons and the sun and there are the lovely galaxies. And then at the end, we've got our two aliens. On the run I did before when I prepared it, I only did two aliens. Obviously, you saw me do three to show you how you could duplicate or add other things. And then there are my 10 blank cards at the end. So it gives you a PDF like that. We're going to go back to the, where is it? Launch tabletop window that we were working on before. And we're now going to move to step three where we upload it. Got your PDF ready to go? Yes, we do. Thanks for asking. We're going to feed it the fronts that we just created. Well, they're the ones that I created earlier. So you can't see the window that I'm looking at. Here we are. Once again, if you leave the page, you close it while it's uploading, you will lose. Uh, the progress that you've made, that upload will be cancelled. So we just need to wait for that to upload. It's about 52 megabytes because they were all PNGs, which means that they're, you know, nice and crisp and clear. But once you've got a few of them, they do wind up being quite large. So we're halfway there. What the Stitcher does is it provides that PDF uh, with the specs that will pass verification. Once it's uploaded, the system's going to analyze it and it's looking for particular, uh, particular characteristics. And if the file meets all of those characteristics, then it will pass verification. And it's ready to be printed. So you can see it now telling you that it's all good to go. Because it's now verifying, we can go and add another component. Let's go and have a look at a tuck box because my deck of cards needs a tuck box. So inside our tuck box, we have poker sized cards and we're going to print them on 300 GSM. This is important because the heavier GSM is thicker. So your deck of cards, you've got 90 300 GSM cards and 90 350 GSM cards. The 350 GSM cards will be a taller deck than the thinner ones. We need 90 to fit in our box. Uh, I'm just going to click smooth and matte. It's created the component. Here we are back. Here's our simplified mode. Our verified file is all ready to go. We'll take a look at the report in a moment. But let's uh, 
give it some artwork because I've got that ready. And here it is. If I had fed it something that was the wrong size, you would see a very different message. So let's pick something that's the wrong size like one of my cards. And it'll go, I'm sorry, that's not suitable. What I need is this, but you've only given me this. It won't let you continue. So we go select another image and hopefully it was just, you accidentally slipped the wrong thing. Um, all of the templates that we supply, whether they're the PSD or the PNG templates, they match the dimensions absolutely. So if you're using those, you should be good to go. Because tuck boxes only get printed on the outside, we only have to give it one file. This is for the outside. You can't see all the details there, obviously, but it will work fine. So because it was a single file, it's a fast upload. It's now creating that on the server and we'll quickly go and have a look right here. So it'll give me a different message. It gives me the name of the component. I only call it Tuckbox, but if I'd called it uh, my Tuckbox for the designer deck, it would say download my Tuckbox for the designer deck PDF. So it will give you a little bit of information about what the thing is. Um, if you want it to be super clear, give it a lovely clear name. And I will go and find the tuck box that I opened up before, well, I prepared it earlier. So here it is. You can see that what we have is a thing that looks like a PDF, yay. And it's got the tuck box die lines. So we've got the red for the die lines. We've got the gold dashes for the folds. Here's our safe margin. Um, and that's everything that you need to be able to give it to the system to pass. And we've got our PDF ready to go now. So we're going to feed it the one that we just saved out. So I've got to find my downloads folder. Tuck box. Go, go, go. So we're uploading. Now it's verifying. It was only a little file, so it's quick to upload. Let's have a look at our report, though, for the cards and see how we did. It said that we passed, but it's always good to check that everything is as you expect. Let's see. It uses RGB, which we knew was going to happen because we were using PNG files. And it says success. It's ready to go, which is always a lovely message to get. So our tuck box, obviously we do a back as well. Can't print cards without a back. Our tuck box is nice and quick because it's one page and one image. And let's see, the die lines appear a little bit different, which is a quirk of the system, but it's not a huge problem. So it's only a warning. Congratulations, we're good to go, which is always great. So that is our PDF stitcher, a really quick intro. Um, if you stuck with me this long, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, hit us up for questions. Um, if you need assistance, you can always email us at support at launchtabletop.com. I didn't set up a banner for the Discord, Discord server before, but that's available too. Uh, if you want faster responses, support's probably a little bit easier. And if you're ready to get stuck in, go to app.launchtabletop.com, uh, set up an account if you don't already have one, and have a play. We look forward to uh, printing you something lovely soon. Catch you next time.